Hello. Perfect. So, Kiana, how are you today? I'm doing amazing. How are you? I'm doing good as well. Thank you so much. So, welcome to the show. It is amazing to have someone as amazing as you here. So, before we start, I have to give you an epic, badass welcome to the show. So, It is epic, I know. Yes. And, and, and yeah. badass. So, so, starting with the whole interview now, tell me where does your passion for acting start? My passion for acting started when I was 10 years old. My parents um, took me to a Camp Music Circus. It's a theater in Northern California. Um, mm -hmm. So we did theater there. I did it over the summer when I was going into fifth grade and I just fell in love with live performances. My first play ever was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and I played an Oompa Loompa and I just had so much fun and I've been doing yeah. it ever since. <laughs> That's so cool, wow. So in 2017 you were in the film Blur. Tell me, was that your first film experience and what are some uh, of the things that you enjoyed the most about that project? Yeah, so I went to um, Chapman University in Orange County, which has a really good film school. And I lived with the theater and film kids my freshman year. And so I met a lot of them. Um, so throughout the years, I was in a few student films, but Blur was the biggest one I was in. I actually did makeup and I had a small part on it. Um, so I was fully involved with the production there. And it was really cool to be a part of that student production. It was so well run, so well organized. It was really awesome. And it's a really funny short film. Um, and it was actually written by one of the writers of South Park. So it was really cool. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. And tell me, like, what were some of the challenges that you had when you started with your career? I mean, challenges that, like, everyone has. I mean, it's kind of hard. I, I you know, I came from Northern California. I didn't know anyone mm -hmm. in L.A. I had a few friends here. But, you know, you don't really know what you're going to do. And especially when I first moved here, I had yeah. no idea what I I didn't know if I should, you know, be getting reps. I didn't know like what classes I should be taking. So you're kind of just going in blind. A lot of people mm. do for the most part. Um, and so it's just really hard to get your footing. So it's taking me about three years up until now to really finally figure out what I've been missing out on and what I yeah. should be doing. And what I found is that I just have a love for comedy. So I'm trying to stick with comedy and not focus on anything else right now. <laughs> That's cool. That's cool. Wow. Wow, and then in 2019, you were in the Baby Splitters. So tell me about that project and how you how you usually prepare before shooting a scene. Yeah, so Baby Splitters was um, a film that, um, you know, I can't remember the director's name right now, but it was about two couples that end up getting pregnant together and sharing a baby. So it was a crazy, crazy concept. And one yeah. of the lead actors from the community was in it, and I'm so sorry I'm forgetting his name but he was hysterical um, and so he played one of the one of the dads and I played a nurse on it and um, it was a really fun scene I was just like a maternity ward scene that and I had like one line um, but it was yeah. really cool a small independent film so it wasn't a big production but it was really fun and it's a really fun film and in order to get prepared for a scene I mean it really depends if I'm doing drama um, I usually in a really sad music <laughs> if yeah. it's something like intense or I have to cry um, mm. and then for comedy I don't really prepare for comedy you know because I kind of let things come to me I really enjoy mm. improvisation yeah. um, so I kind of just let you know the comedy come to me I don't like to practice comedy because I don't feel like that's real like fun or real comedy so um, yeah. I try to just think for the most part <laughs> Totally. Yeah, it is interesting, right? That, that in comedy, I think uh, um, specifically that when you really try to be funny, you're not going to be funny. So you have to pretty much let things go. Yep, that's like the one rule of improv that we learned. So <laughs> gotta just let it go. Totally, totally. And in 2020, you were in The Hunting of Haunted House. So tell me also about, um, about that show and about your character. Yeah, so um, that was actually just a podcast. So I got into voiceover last year, really. Um, I got a voiceover agent last year, and this was just a podcast that popped up, and it was like mm -hmm. a spooky thing going on, which is really fun. I love Halloween. Um, and so I had a few lines in that, and that is out on Apple and Spotify. And so it wasn't anything big, but I got really into voiceover, and so now I'm doing like commercials and cartoons and all that kind of stuff. So that really kicked off my career, which was really fun. <laughs> 
Yeah, absolutely. And tell me, like, how you usually prepare a character? Like, what's you like? Uh, what are some of the techniques, let's say, or or how? Or what's the process that you usually take in order to uh, prepare a character? Do you mean for voiceover or like any acting character? Uh, in, ge uh, in, uh, in general. In general, um, so when you get like a character breakdown, I really like to study it and kind of bring myself into it because a lot of the time, especially if you have like an audition. Um, or you don't have much about the character, maybe it's a short film and the director's like, you just, you just do you. Um, you want to bring yourself to it. So even if it's a story about a girl who, you know, has a completely different life than I do, I kind of just try to bring elements of my life into it. Be like, how can I relate to this character? What can I bring yeah. to kind of drama? What kind of comedy can I bring to it? What kind of experiences do I have that would relate to this character? Because if you try to be someone completely different and take yourself out of it, it's not going to be realistic. So mm. as long as you make the character seem real and seem like they have real emotions going on in their head, that's when mm. you know it's a good acting. <laughs> totally. And from the characters you have played at, at the moment, would you say that each one contained parts of, parts, uh, of yourself? Um, definitely. I think mm. that I'm bringing a lot of myself to all of my characters. Um, I have a certain way of bringing a lot of, because I love comedy, bringing comedy to drama. Um, just bringing all elements of my life into a character is really important. Again, even if it's someone who has a totally different life, maybe even looks different than, you know, you just have to like bring yourself to the character. Otherwise it's not going to be real. <laughs> yeah, totally. And what would you say it's an important aspect for storytelling? An important aspect for storytelling, again, is bringing yourself. And I think um, just being true to the world and the character and just trying to see, especially like through the directors and the writer's eyes, they're trying to portray it in a certain way. So in order to get there, studying um, your character and studying the words that they want to portray is really important because they're trying to tell a story a certain way. Yeah. So if you get a grasp on what your character does, what their actions do, um, what they're thinking, even something that the audience mm -hmm. doesn't even see. That's, it's really important to just get, make sure you know everything that's going on. That's why character studying is so important because there's just like certain ways that a character will think that could be completely different from you. Um, yeah, but in, that's why people method act, you know, because they really want to just get into that zone. I don't do that, but I respect it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, tell me about uh, Beanmo and about your character. Um, Venmo was actually a short film that my friend Andrew produced and directed. Um, he's actually been doing a lot of his own work, which is really fun. And so that was a short film about a girl um, or a guy who like Venmo's this girl and the ex-girlfriend sees and gets super jealous. And I just play a really like funny kind of drunk friend in it, which I played a few times. Um, so that was really fun actually getting to see my friend direct and we had all of our friends there working and this was at the beginning of COVID so it was really interesting to see how to do it and we filmed it mostly outside um so filming in the time of COVID has been especially weird but it's really fun to work with your friends because you feel more comfortable and at ease totally. they're able to direct you a little bit easier so I really do recommend working with friends if you're an totally. actor <laughs> yeah totally and if you could describe your career at the moment on a movie or a tv show what would be the title of it um I would say, so I actually have a podcast coming out called No Plan B, and that's what I would also name my movie because I've been, you know, a lot of people have come to LA and they go back to like real estate or they go back to school and they kind of just quit acting, but that is not something I want to do. And so there's no plan B for me. Like I'm steamrolling ahead on this career through the ups and the downs. It's just what's going to happen. So no plan B for me, definitely. Totally. That sounds cool. Love it. Love yeah. it. Now, talking about, so a few minutes ago, you mentioned that you were doing now like vo uh, voiceover. So tell me, what do you like the most about it? Um, voiceover is really cool because you're in a booth and you're able to do so many crazy things that you feel maybe less judged. So like when you're doing cartoon voices, especially, you yeah. can do whatever no one's gonna see you you can just I do a lot of weird voices and weird impressions and so it feels like mm -hmm. I can kind of just let go because no one can see my face so it feels like yeah. I'm unfitted um, and so it's just really fun to just be able to do a bunch of weird voices and do commercials um, and then people are like wow is that you I, like that sounds like you and I'll be like yeah <laughs> so it's cool. just fun yeah. that's awesome 
Now, how you prepare your voice before a voiceover session? Um, so if I do it when I wake up in the morning and I have to do a voiceover, I do vocal warm up. So like I go like, oh, like you know how they do in singing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'll do hot water. Um, I make sure not to eat. If you eat beforehand, your voice sounds like there's yogurt in it. So you can't. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds really weird. So you make sure not okay. to eat. Only a lot of water. I have water right next to me in my booth. I do it in a closet actually. Yeah. Um, and so just making sure that your voice sounds good. My voice is kind of crackly, so I make sure I don't go too low. I try to stay at an mm. even tone. It takes a lot of practice. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. And from your voiceover reel on SoundCloud, tell me which one you enjoy the most. My voiceover reel, so I have my commercial reel and my character reel, and I like my character reel more. I think there was one character, um, she doesn't even have a name but um i think there was like a british lady that i did that was really fun i did um hayley from american dad i did like one of her lines okay. which i was kind of pulling from cartoons um and i've gotten really good feedback on my cartoon demo reel and i'd love to do more cartoons so that was a really cool one to do <laughs> that's awesome yeah. and back when you back when you started doing voiceover what were some of the challenges that you had um, when I first started, um, it was hard to get a voiceover rep and people to mm. listen to my It was at the start of COVID, so things were kind of iffy. Um, yeah. My, I really didn't know what I was doing because voiceover, it's not just talking. You have to do it in a certain way into a microphone. And so mm. people, it doesn't really sound right. Like, what are you doing? I had to get a whole new microphone, new yeah. software. I got a new computer so like just figuring out how to do everything was hard but i finally figured it out i think <laughs> that's cool and if you could do the voiceover for any movie tv show or even a video game which one you will choose um i would love to be on rick and morty i that is like one of my top goals one of my favorite voiceover artists kari walgren um she does literally everything voiceover anime yeah. like card yeah so she does Video games um and she was on rick and morty she plays um jessica i believe morty's like kind of girlfriend and i just mm -hmm. love that such a funny show i mean any cartoon really like south park would be cool um a yeah. family guy something comedic to like even if it's one line that would just be sick <laughs> yeah totally totally mm -hmm. wow and uh like what advice could you give to people who recently started doing voiceover um take a class because i thought i was really good before i took a class and then people were like oh no you're not doing it right yeah. oh okay um make sure you invest in the right equipment like the you have like the little box that clicks into your computer i don't know why i can't think of the name it's like the it's like an amp that you mm. plug in your computer into kind of but you plug in your microphone um invest in a good microphone again these are all expenses but it pays off um, find a good rep for you that'll submit you to tons of commercials. I submit myself to a lot of commercials, which is cool. Um, and just really stay focused on it and keep your keep it up because it's really hard. And I've done a ton of auditions, not a lot of payback. But again, I'm pretty new, so you just kind of the same with acting. Got to keep pushing through it. <laughs> yeah, totally. And from all of your different performances, which one has been the deepest learning curve? I mean, the one like like uh, like the performance that you learn most most lessons from. The performance I learned the most lessons from. That's a good question. I don't know if I've had a big enough role in anything to learn lessons, but I would say overall that my improv career, I go to the Groundling School, I've learned the most lessons. Taking improv, I recommend to anyone because it teaches you how to be a better speaker, yeah. get in front of people, doing all that sort of stuff. Um, just learning to be funnier, learning how to write. I've learned a ton of like life lessons and how to be a better person just from improv. Um, so I recommend that to everyone, um, but hopefully I'll get a few new roles where I learn some stuff. I actually just booked my first TV show role. Um, I do that Ooh. next week. I'll learn a few things from that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. that's so awesome. Yeah. Cool, now tell me what motivates you every day? Uh, in order, in order to like to continue building your career, and and I mean, of course, that we all have like a, like let's say bad days, right? So, tell me right. like what like what are the things that make you kind of get out of it, and 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 continue, of course. Right. Um. So obviously, there's more bad days than good, 
Um, but when it is good and you have a good day, it is so great. You're just on top of the world. And yeah. the thing about acting is you don't know what's going to happen. It's scary, which would scare most people. This is why a lot of people can't be actors because it freaks them totally. out. The unknown. Totally. Um, but it could be so great. Like you never know. Like tomorrow I could book a huge movie. Like you just never know. And so that kind of keeps you do better. Keep taking classes. Mm not get too down, not depressed, because something amazing could happen, you never know. And so yeah. it's, it's a fun career and it's hard, but it really can pay off. There you go, there you yeah. go. And like my last question here is like, any advice to those who recently started building their dreams? What would you say to them? Any dream? Any dream. Um, I would really, so I just recently got into manifesting, which means that you write down a goal, you write down like monthly goals, yearly goals, you write them down very specifically, you meditate on them and you work towards your goal every single day. It doesn't mean that you have to go crazy and not sleep. It means that you're doing something that makes you happy and makes you feel better than you are every single day. Yeah. Um, So, you know, having a dream board, getting, investing in yourself, making sure that you stay healthy and happy, mm. um, just having a clear goal in your mind to work towards. Because if you don't have anything clear going on, head, you're not, you're going to be kind of lost. So I was lost. Okay. Now I'm like, okay, this is my goal. This is what I'm going to do. These are the steps to get there. So just making sure you have an organized sort of, and you'll learn new things along the way. There's like new things popping up. Totally. All the It's fun. You know, that's what life is about is learning and trying to figure out why you're here <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. and 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 also i think that along the way you might discover something new right for example that mm -hmm. you might think that you like this thing but on the road you discover something new that you really love that you know what i mean that, I think that at the end of the day yeah it's like exploring basically i think everything happens for a reason like mm -hmm. you might have a career and figure out you hate it but you were meant to have that first career to figure out that you wanted to go be a dentist i don't know i think everything has its purpose so <laughs> yeah totally totally I mean, yeah yeah and and like the most important thing here is to do the thing that you love the most you know like it, it doesn't matter what it is but if it is what makes you happy and if it is like your passion yeah at the end of the day we only have one life right and i do believe that everybody should live like the way they want it you know uh-huh absolutely you got to be happy <laughs> totally, <laughs> okay. totally totally Well, yeah, what can I say? I mean, basically, you are super talented here. I can't wait to see more of your awesome work in the future, hopefully. And I'm super sure we will we will hear you in Family Guy or Rick and Morty or in uh, another of those amazing shows here and there. Maybe in, uh, in, in, uh, in, a, in this huge movie franchise. We will see. I'm super sure that that, that amazing things are going to happen because you are super honest and you're super passionate about, about your career. And the fact that you are pursuing it and you're talented, that's a huge plus, you know? Yep. Yeah. Working on my stuff every day, not giving up. So uh, you will you see go. me. <laughs> I'm looking forward. There you forward. go. Now, because we finished the whole questions here, I have to have to give you an epic, massive shout out here. So there you go. And uh, and also, thank you so much for those for those who tune in. Also, if you're listening to this later on the podcast or watching this later on the YouTube, normally what I would say is to put pause, leave a like, of course, and then hydrate. And then follow Gianna and all of her social media. Leave a million likes here and there. Share her content. Spread the word that we have a talented, uh, talented actress here. And why not send the material to you know to to to, to some high to some big studio here and there? Why not? And then come back for sure. Hey. And okay. uh, yeah. And and again, Gianna, thank you so much for being here. Uh, as I said before, I can't wait to see more of your amazing job here in the future. And before I send you off, I need to send you off in an epic, badass way. So. Thank you very much. Keep having an amazing rest of the day, and I'll see you in the next one. You too. Bye bye. Bye.